training in the MLB is in full stride. NBA, NBA All-Star Weekend wrapped up, and Dak Prescott gets a huge extension. All of this and more today on Tailgate. Hello and welcome to Tailgaters. My name is Zach Collard and to my left here is Ethan Cole. How are you doing today, Ethan? Uh, I'm doing great. We got a huge weekend in pro sports. Let's let's get into it. So we got some NBA All-Star Weekend action um, and it was a ton in one night. Usually put out into one weekend and put all into one night. Yeah, the you had a NBA All-Star Sunday kicked off with a 2v2 matchup with Quavo and Jack Harlow against 2 Chains and Little Baby. Quavo excelled with another great performance in the game. Ethan, what did you think about Little Baby's performance, though? I'm going to tell you, he needs some work on some free throws, maybe just shooting in general. It was awful to watch. Um, also, a contest got underway. Uh, the skills challenge where Indiana Pacers power forward DeMontis Sabonis beat Orlando Magic Center Nikola Vucevic in that contest. Pretty interesting to watch. In the dunk contest, Portland Trailblazers guard Anthony Simmons took it home without Dwayne Wade getting in the way this year. And Steph Curry took home the three-point crown in a star-studded battle. Steph was sure shining in the three-point contest. He's also shining in the All-Star game, 28 points. Team LeBron took home the win, 170-150. Steph had a great game, but Giannis Antetokounmpo stole the show, going 16 for 16, even three for three from three-point range. He was the winner of the Kobe Bryant All-Star MVP trophy. The NBA All-Star game was great. In the NFL, QB Dak Prescott signed a massive deal yesterday. The Cowboys signed him for four years worth $160 million with a $66 million signing bonus, which is the highest in NFL history. He finally got paid. I didn't know if it would be coming, but he'll make $75 million in his first year. Great. Maybe that's for the pain and suffering Cowboys fans, and he got last year. So um, that puts some of the QB controversy to bed. There's still a lot others, but... I truly believe, I said this last week, only the Cowboys would pay Dak the money he wanted, and they, they came through on that promise. So Yeah. I think Dak is honestly a good fit in Dallas because of what D Dallas offers offensively. With Zeke as the running back and their stars at the wide receiver position with Michael Gallup, Amari Cooper, and C.D. Lamb, if their offensive line can stay healthy, I truly believe that Dallas has what it takes to be one of the best offenses in, in the NFL this year. Yeah, after getting injured last year, it seemed apparent that the Cowboys are not the same team without Dak on the field. I blame a lot on their defense, though. Almost worse in every category. So now that they got Dak locked up, they need to focus on the defense and the draft, free agency. And I think if this offense can stay consistent and healthy, the Cowboys have a real shot at the NFC East title. It doesn't say much for how bad the division was last year, but um, it would be an upgrade for sure for the Cowboys. Um, with free agency just a few weeks away, what are you most excited to see? Well, Ethan, with a few receivers signing franchise tags today, I'd say I'm most interested to see where Texans wide receiver Will, Bo Will Fuller V ends up. I don't think he'll stay in the dumpster fire that's the Houston Texans, but um, I personally think he'll land in Miami and help build that offense up and give two more weapons. But, you know, it's still up in the air, but that's just personally where I think he'll land. All right, yeah, big Dolphins fan. I mean, I would, I would definitely welcome him in, but uh, I'm going to agree. It's definitely going to be interesting to see where he goes, especially since big-name guys like Chris Godwin and Allen Robinson just got tagged today right before the deadline at four. And just because they got tagged, I don't know if they're going to stay because uh, Jarvis Landry was traded with the tag on. So we'll see what happens, but it's very interesting to see what happens. So Yeah, really anything can happen in the NFL free agency. But now let's focus on some MLB spring training, which is now in full force. Some prospects are off to a great start at the beginning of spring training. Bobby Witt Jr. of my own Kansas City Royals is off to a great start with a 353 batting average, two home runs, and six RBIs. Yesterday, he launched a 484-foot home run that ended in the con concourse of Surprise Stadium. Wow, yeah, another uh, prospect in that same division, uh, Tigers' Spencer Torkelson, has struggled. Zero hits and eight at-bats. Hopefully he can get it together, but as an Orioles fan, we got some promising prospects, but we're still far from getting anywhere in the postseason or even getting close with being, in my opinion, the best division in baseball with the Yankees, Rays, Red Sox, and Blue Jays. I just don't see us getting very far. 
Yeah, I can only imagine what you'd have to go through as an Orioles fan of that AL East division. But in other news coming out of baseball, last week the MLB announced that they will have fans in the stands for opening day. Hallelujah. All teams will play on April, 4, April 1st for the first game of the season. The defending champion Dodgers will begin their title defense on the road against the rebuilding Colorado Rockies. And for Missourians like myself, the Kansas City Royals will begin the season at home against the Texas Rangers. And the St. Louis Cardinals will kick off their campaign with a road battle against the Cincinnati Reds. Yeah, and uh, what did you think about the 2020 season? With it being condensed, I feel like I couldn't get into it as much. Like, there was something missing. Well, what do you think about it? I personally, for selfish reasons, I personally like the uh, season, uh, mainly because my Royals didn't lose 100 games this year. They, there weren't even 100 games to play, but like, I liked it because uh, it gave a different sense to the MLB this year. Um, and really just, I felt like it focused more on the best team was going to win, and the best team ended up winning in the Dodgers. So I, for one, really liked it because oftentimes, in a best of in the playoffs and stuff, you know, anything can happen. Like last year, the Nationals won. The Nationals were a wild card team. But I think the 60 game season really helped the Dodgers stay fresh and really let the best team win last year. Yeah, especially being a fan of a bad team. Uh, it was kind of, it was interesting because you're like, hey, we can't lose as many games, so maybe we'll win more games than we were projected to. Um, anyways, with the second half of the NBA season coming up, baseball about to come back, and the NFL free agency. That'll do it for our show today. Uh, for Zach Calder, my name is Ethan Cole. As always, stay safe, enjoy some sports. Don't swear in front of your parents, and we will see you next time.